Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie and this video is all about landscaping. So in this video I'd like to show you how we go from a basic skeleton of a diorama into this which is um, an almost completed uh, valley where you can see the river is taking, uh, taking shape and the hillsides and the embankments um, are pretty much complete. So I guess the first thing we're going to need is a plan. I think it's always best uh, to draw a plan, so I put this piece of paper here. Um, and obviously to have a viaduct you must have a couple of hillsides or a cutting or a valley through the hillside, so hopefully this will help us kind of envisage what's kind of happening. So this is where the hillside kind of comes down, uh, like that. And then obviously we need a river to run through the centre, so we will have a river a kind of going through here perhaps. Um, and there'll also be uh, on this hillside a road working its way along and it'd be a small kind of farm track and that will go across uh, the crossing and then off um, up the other side. So the edge of the scenery I imagine will kind of be about here and this is where we need to make our land and then similarly um, on the other side then we'll probably make our land in kind of this area here. So we, ha we have a plan and then we can um, now cut up our, our land form and then fit that. When I first worked out the height of the baseboard, I kind of underestimated it by about five millimetres, sort of deliberately, so that there was no risk of the viaduct when I put together being too high for the surrounding tracks. Um, so because of those calculations, I'm forced to use about a five millimetre um, piece of balsa under each pier to bring it up to the right height. I bought some sheets of uh, expanded polystyrene from Wix here in the UK and I had to cut a section off for me to get it in the car um, but the general dimensions it are, oops, are um, about an inch or 25 centimetres um, thick and they are three, five, eight foot long and eight foot in metric is about uh, about just under two and a half meters long. So what I thought I would do is trim this to size and fit it and sort of slide it under. The viaduct itself is now being held in place just by the tension between these two um, wooden sections. It's not glued in, um, but it seems pretty stable. So there's no really reason for me to take it apart and put loads of glue in. Um, I think the land form itself will hold it there. Anyway, so I'm going to cut this down, fit it in and see how we get on.
I must confess that working with polystyrene is clearly one of the messiest jobs um, I've ever encountered. The stuff gets absolutely everywhere. A friend of mine at a model railway club introduced me to uh, this Bosch glue gun and I must confess it's absolutely brilliant, ideal for hold holding these um, little bits of bolster in place. So I've now built up this hillside very roughly with the, uh, with the polystyrene sheets and simply stack them one on top of the other um, and glued them with um, a cheap and cheerful PVA. And this one's from Dial, I think that's from B&Q. Um, so it's, there's no expensive products here, it's just a case of, of uh, stacking them up and gluing them down. And if of course I'd made a mistake at this stage, well I'd probably wasted, I don't know, five pounds on polystyrene. So it would be just a case of just ripping out and starting here again. And now what I'm going to do is just do this, uh, uh, give this a trim with a hot wire cutter um, to give it a bit of shape. But remembering I will need to put a road into this section here to go out across the other side. Anyway, um, I've got as far as I can today. I'll wait this down uh, overnight and, uh, and come back to you in the morning. So let's hopefully, hopefully this is all nice and solid and yes it is um, so I'll get the, uh, the hot wire cutter and trim this back um, get it into some kind of shape and then we'll have a look at, uh, at the other side I've trimmed some of the polystyrene back in places because I actually wanted the hillside to break into a, a like a, a small cliff rock edge um, which would then go down into the river and I have some rocks left over from a, a, a previous project and rather than discard those I thought I'd use those um, and see if I could fit them into this layout and they, are, they have some promise. And then looking at the road area I thought I'd use a, a carving knife to try to carve out the polystyrene, but uh, just make sure you, uh, you, you, you cut away from yourself rather than towards you. And while cutting the roadway out of the polystyrene, it became apparent that clearly the PVA hadn't dried overnight and that the polystyrene hillside was actually um, still quite loose.
So it's now decision time on what glue to continue with. So I've opted for this polyurethane uh, wood adhesive from Evo Stick. Um, and unlike the glue sticks glue, it doesn't melt the polystyrene and it does give it um, a very uh, quick bond. So I've now decided to dismantle the hill and wipe away any of the uh, PVA that I put on yesterday that hasn't dried and then re-glue it uh, with the polyurethane glue. And this has a drying time of, with wood, which sets in five minutes, bonds to most types of wood as well as masonry, concrete, polystyrene, brick and much more. Well, this hillside section is basically finished. Um, as you see, I've cut out the basics of where the road's going to go. Um, and I, really all it needs now is a coating of paper mache. And I think sculpt mold tends to be the product of choice these days. So I'll try that out for the first time. Though we also have another paper mache type thing, which was a lot cheaper I managed to find in a model shop in Weymouth. Um, so what I'm going to do now is bring up the back section uh, to fit to bring these up. The viaduct itself still isn't glued down so I'm not too worried about damaging it because I can take it out when I do any, um, any vicious kind of cutting and that kind of stuff. Um, but I've also acquired um, a couple of few offcuts of Celotex. Now this Celotex normally comes in a, uh, a silver sheeting but I've peeled the sheet, silver sheeting off and see how that glues down. I'm just going to um, do the backup with that because I think it might actually be a lot easier to work with than polystyrene um, but I've tried it with the, um, the hot wire cutter and it certainly doesn't cut anywhere near the same kind of thing. It is a bit fumy and it's much more dense but cutting it with a knife it's so much easier. So here's the Celotex I mentioned except here it's still got the silver paper on it um, and it comes in massive sheets um, and in Imperials it's eight foot by four foot sheets and I think it is exp it's quite expensive but as a byproduct, this, is, this comes out of a friend of mine who was uh, making his own railway room and it comes out of his roof um, that's sort of just an off cut but I've got quite a bit of this so uh, I'll build this up and we'll see how we get on. To, to glue polystyrene with PVA is clearly a mistake. It must take days for it to go off because um, inside a hillside like this it's so dense. Um, but the glue I showed you earlier has worked absolutely fine and it's very very grabby and within a couple of minutes this was uh, solid. Of course deep down inside of here there is still the PVA going off so I want to be a little bit cautious with this but if it does come apart then I can always re-glue it with that glue. So I'll whip off the um, viaduct and then glue the back section before I turn on the other side. What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to go into, the, into great detail on the other side until this, until I'm happy with this side and then I can build the next hillside um, to kind of reflect this one if that makes any sense. Let's get one done before we uh, step into the unknown with the next.
So while the glue that's holding the Sellotex down is drying, I thought I'd make up a few more uh, plaster rocks um, for the hillside. And I've just used ordinary plaster of Paris into these uh, Woodland Scenics rock mould, which I bought some time ago. And after pre-wetting them with um, a sort of a dilute washing up liquid, um, because that enables the plaster of Paris to sink right to the bottom of the moulds, um, all I've done is just made a few of those up um, and then give them a good few days uh, to dry right out before you try to prise them out of the moulds. They will come out, but you certainly don't want to work them for a few days um, until they've gone, excuse the pun, rock solid. You can see some before and after uh, shots here. Uh, where I've used the other one on the, on the previous layout. Um, they're not that difficult to work, you can take a saw to them, um, excuse the dust, you know, don't do it uh, um, in a confined area, but they do saw apart quite easily.
thought I'd mix up some plaster of Paris and apply it uh, between the rocks where there are substantial gaps. Make sure you wet the rocks thoroughly before you do this because otherwise the, the dried out rocks would just absorb all the plaster straight away out of the um, out of your mix and it will just sort of crack and it won't really apply, it will just fall away. So give it a good soaking before you uh, use your little tools to, to press it in between the rocks. I think it's taking the time at this stage will give you all the benefits in the future. Once, the, once these little small details are sorted out, when the finished product I'm sure will be, uh, will be much better. Now this is a product that's new to me and it's called Sculptor Mold and it's, uh, it's like a paper mache with um, sort of plaster uh, powder sort of put in with it and it's absolutely marvellous. Um, you mix it up um, from a large bag and you mix it to the consistency of cottage cheese. There's a ratio of, of sort of two scoops of Sculptor Mold to one of water. Give it a, um, a, a stirring and then just apply it with a trowel. After about sort of 15, 20 minutes, if you wet your fingers and you run your fingers over the top of it, you can take out all the marks. It really is an absolute game changer. Um, I've used quite a few products in the past, but this is truly uh, game changing. It's, it's a, it is a wonderful product. As I've been making this video, I've also been applying some dark washes uh, to the viaduct itself. And you can probably tell here that the, uh, the piers themselves now appear darker than the bridge structure. Um, but it'll all come good in the end. I'm still undecided on exactly what sort of bridge to put across in the foreground for this sort of farm track. I'm just using this Pico uh, bridge as a, as a stand-in as it were, as a substitute until I can come up with something a little more suitable. So um, that remains undecided at the moment what exactly to use, but at least then I can sort of plan the structure um, whilst the rest of the, um, the landscape takes shape. So finally, I think we just need to give it a, a light coating of a, a soil kind of undercoat. Um, and this is just a cheap and cheerful poster paint from Hobbycraft, just to uh, stop it looking like a scene from the Alps. Of course, this was the main reason that I chose not to glue down the viaduct, so that when I'm starting, you know, slapping lots of paint around here, um, was not to get it all over the viaduct. So I wanted to have the ability uh, to remove it to keep it safe. And it was the same when I put the sculptor mold on. I mean, obviously, the last thing I wanted to do was cover that in uh, in sculptor mold. So there we are with the viaduct and the little, little road bridge back in place. Well, I do hope you found that interesting. Um, the, the poster paint's just going off, so it'll, it'll dry lighter than it is. It looks a little bit kind of horrendous now. Um, it's just such a shock to see such a change from the, the bleak white to suddenly this kind of earthy rich colour. Um, just to summarise this, um, there's a couple of things that I found really interesting and that first thing was Sculptor Mold. I've mentioned it in the past, um, it really is a good product. Hopefully there should be a link in the See More tab below and I think you can get it for under sort of 15 quid um, a bag and I've used kind of three quarters of a bag on this so it does go a fair old way. Um, a few bits that um, I haven't mentioned, on the front I'm going to have like a, a plywood cover 
um, which will be painted black um, to give you that kind of end. Um, what else is there? Just let me check my notes. You saw me using a, a carving knife. Mm, not the most clever idea. Um, and I did cut my finger. You, you're not surprised to hear that. Um, but do make sure if, you, if you're trying to carve this stuff up, make sure you cut away from yourself. I just missed it just once and I, I nicked my finger like a complete fool. Um, the river scene, I've got some um, uh, an epoxy resin to do that and that will all be in the next video as will the landscape itself, uh, trees, bushes and everything else. That will all be um, in the kind of part two of this. Um, this has been a very long slog to get this far. Um, it was quite difficult um, and again I'll always, always thank my patrons for my, their support in helping me buy some of these products. A couple of the mistakes then. Um, this side I used uh, the polystyrene. What a mistake that was. It went absolutely everywhere and then trying to use a water-based glue to glue it all together and of course I wanted it to go off the following day and it didn't so it kind of fell apart and if you remember I wiped it all off with a blue paper towel and then re-glued it. I tried gluing it with the, with the Bostick glue gun and that melts the polystyrene but that Evo stick stuff did work in the end. The Celotex, what a bonus, really, really good stuff. Um, extremely satisfied with the way that's worked out. Easy to carve, it's light, it's strong, you know, it's the, it's the kind of stuff to go for as far as I'm concerned. Um, and those are the kind of the, the lessons I've learned really. Um, but it's been an interesting, oh, my little bridge has fallen over. It's been an interesting uh, evolution up to now. I mentioned I haven't decided on the footbridge yet and the pathway that's going to come around here for the sort of farm track kind of look. Um, so I'll have to keep my eyes out for a decent kind of, uh, not sorry, footbridge, little sort of farm road bridge as it were to go over there. Um, but hopefully um, you enjoyed watching it. I think I've thoroughly enjoyed doing it, but it was a labour of love. This has taken a good couple of weeks in the last sort of 35 minutes. Um, that you've been watching and if you're still watching from the beginning it was a labour of love and thank you for bearing with it. So that about wraps it up. Um, thank you for the patrons, don't forget to subscribe and there's a little bell to ring if you want a notification of when my next video comes up which should be two weeks today. Thanks a lot, take care, here's more videos, bye bye.